So now we're back with uh, the, the pitch panel and we have some familiar faces. Welcome back on stage, everybody. Thank you. Um, maybe some of the viewers have uh, recently arrived and missed part of the morning session. So let's do it a little bit quick. Johan, welcome. Johan, who, who are you? Who I am? I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm Johan, obviously, uh, and I'm with, uh, with the Embracer group. Yes, Johan Hermerian, welcome. And Thank then we you. have Staffan Berlian. Yes. I'm with. Uh, I'm the publishing director for um, Enad Global 7 EG7. All right. And Arvin Ashafi. Yes, I work with corporate development at MTG. Excellent. And Anton Albin, who's doing our uh, online <laughs> content moderation or whatever. If you have questions or comments, behave, because Anton will be the judge of whether they make <laughs> it to the stage or not. All right, uh, are you ready for the first pitch? Yes, yes, yes. sir. Yeah? All right. So let's bring on stage Go Fight Fantastic and Lina Andersson. <laughs> the stage is yours. Yes, thank you. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Lina, and I'm going to show you our upcoming game, Go Fight Fantastic. Go Fight Fantastic is a free player hack and slash uh, with both local and online multiplayer. You can play as three different characters, the tank, striker and healer, each with their unique set of abilities. The game has been in development for about four years now and it's made by me and my fiance Johan and our awesome puppy, Bowie, who's also in the game as Captain Bowie. The game is about a crew of teenage mercenaries and their space dog, Captain Bowie, who happens to stumble into an alien invasion. And uh, here's our trailer. The game has two different game modes. Uh, first off, we have our story mode, where you unravel the story through seven different levels. Then we have our horde mode, where you uh, defeat enemy waves and uh, go for the high score. Uh, since we're such a small production team, we decided to focus heavily on uh, replayability. So we do that through upgrades, challenges and by letting the players customize the difficulty level of the game. The most exciting of uh, these features is our upgrading system. Um, in the game you can find persistent upgrades that let you customize your character. So if you want to cr make a crazy DPS healer that throws explosions instead of uh, healing orbs, you can totally do that. A few months ago, we uh, did a successful Kickstarter and it was amazing to see all people play our demo and uh, some of them even played more than 20 hours in the tiny demo we had. Um, we're uh, currently 
uh, running a closed beta. And we're hoping to release the game on early access in May next year. Um, if everything goes well, we hope to uh, release uh, the game on uh, Switch, Xbox and uh, PlayStation as well. Um, we have also planned a lot of DLC content, such as uh, new characters, additional levels, um, new horde mode arenas and uh, custom character skins. Um, the game has so far been uh, completely self-funded, uh, but we recently started to talk to a couple of publishers. Um, what we're looking for the most in a partner is uh, someone who can help us with marketing and uh, funding. So if you're interested, let us know. Thank you so much. Go fight fantastic! All right, panelists, questions first, opinions later, Stefan. Um, uh, how much funding are you looking for? Um, that's a hard question. Um, the game can be pretty expandable, depending on what a publisher would like. Um, but we should need maybe 18 months of uh, funding and maybe around 250,000 euro. Uh, but it's depending on, it's, uh, you know, uh, negotiable. <laughs> yeah. So would you expand the team if you got a chance to do that? Or would you want to keep it with you guys and the dog? Uh, I think I want to keep it just us. Um, but we're open to maybe taking another programmer. Um, it might be good to speed things along. Uh, but uh, if we were to, we want to find the right person. Since we're such a small team and we work from home, uh, we don't want anyone to just, you know, live in our living room. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who, who, who would want strangers? <laughs> can, can I have <laughs> shoot yeah. another question? Of course. Uh, you mentioned the uh, Switch and PlayStation and the other platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, are you? doing that yourselves, or how is the plan to...? Uh, we're planning to do it ourselves, uh, but we want to uh, complete the early access phase before we start looking into yeah. uh, the other platforms. All right. Uh, in so terms of Arvin, competition, hmm? what do you see on the market? Uh, you're thinking about other games? Yeah. Um, well, there's a lot of competition. Uh, I think the m one of the most recent competitions, Hades, is one big competition since uh, we have similar art styles and similar combat mechanics. Um, but uh, I don't think that people just buy one game. Uh, so I, I think it should be fine. <laughs> is Hades multiplayer, by the way? Uh, no, it's not multiplayer. It's only a single player. Hmm. And it's a roguelike, and we're not a roguelike, but... Uh, Uh, you, you maybe said that, but uh, will there be any kind of a PvP in the game? Uh, there will not be any PvP. Uh, the game is co-op only. All right. Is uh, that something you think of to, to add that feature? Uh, we've been thinking about it, uh, but if we're going to add PvP, uh, we want to do it in a good way, uh, not just throw in PvP for PvP's sake. Um, so if we're to have PvP, we want to make sure that it really fits the game, uh, so it makes a good addition. Okay. But, but do you think it will fit the game, uh, based on where the game is now? Maybe, it's, it's hard to say. Uh, not really, uh, I don't think, uh, but it's possible. <laughs> All right. But wha what's the gameplay in this horde? Did you say horde arena where you're yeah. supposed yeah. to die horribly? Yeah, uh, exactly. That sounds <laughs> really like <laughs> PvP. <but> uh, <laughs> no, it's PvE. Uh, so you uh, play co-op with uh, two friends uh, or alone, uh, and uh, there's coming waves of enemies, and you have to defeat them before the next waves come in. Um, so it's more like a survival things, and you get score. 
and such. So the arena is almost like a boss level, except waves rather than boss. Yeah, there will be bosses as well oh. uh, together with the waves. Um, so every f every enemy that's uh, in the storm mode, both bosses and minions, will also be in the horde mode arena. Cool. So it's uh, quite challenging. Yeah, sorry, I'm not supposed to ask about. <laughs> but it's a good question. It's <laughs> really good. You. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I, I try. I try. <laughs> the main story was seven. Seven levels. Yeah. How uh, how long is the uh, would you say is the normal play time for the first time you? Play through those. Uh, we're aiming for around 30 to 40 minutes uh, if you like to explore things. Because yeah. we're going to have uh, hidden gems. Per level gems. or per. Per level. Because yeah. yeah. um, we're going to have hidden stuff and uh, people to talk to. But if we're just going to, you know, rush through mm. and uh, maybe play on easy mode, it's going to be a lot faster. Mm -hmm. uh. What else would you would you add to the um, on on the graphical side, for instance, you know, a more dynamic environment and that kind of stuff? Uh, we're going to add more uh, animations to the environment. Right now, it's very uh, static. Uh, so more particle mm -hmm. particle effects, more animations. We're also going to add parallax layers, so you get more depth when you're running through the environment. Uh, so there's a lot of work to be done yes. on the environment. Besides the art style, is there anything else you're going to add in terms of social features, ladders, whatnot? Uh, what do you mean? So, for example, comparing the speed of completing a level maybe to your friends or to other people online. Do you want to install that element? Uh, I, I'm not really sure how, how you mean. Um. Just as a bracket system, perhaps, if you can compare your speed to complete a level. Ah, ah OK. Yeah, uh, you're gonna going to be able to compare speed, but also what kind of challenges uh, you manage to complete. Because okay. um, we're going to add challenges that you can add for yourself to the level, like uh, clear a level without being downed or share a health pool. So it's going to be like achievements so you can see what your friends have managed to do and um, yeah, compare yourself. And not what uh, difficulty levels as well. Uh, what uh, inspirations uh, have you drawn? Uh, yeah, inspiration from. Because uh, uh, I suspect one show, but I'm not sure. If <laughs> what <knows>. show? <laughs> Steven Junior. Yeah, actually, <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, We've drawn experience from a lot of places, uh, much from Japan and uh, the anime culture, but also Steven Universe and uh, old retro games. Uh, in combat mechanics, we tried to keep a bit more modern and uh, looked a lot at uh, Diablo and MOBA games. Uh, but in terms of art style, it's been more uh, cartoon related. Yeah. All right. Do you think that's plenty with the questions? Do you have more? Um, Maybe for later, yes. Maybe for later, <laughs> all right. OK, so we move now to the next part, which is opinions and recommendations. Nice. Yeah. Well, uh, I think it's nice. Uh, <laughs> that's it, no. No, it's <laughs> not that. It's, it's <laughs> some more, actually. <laughs> Completely uh, removed. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, but I think it's nice. I mean, it's a, it's a nice take. Um, but you know, m my main concern is the um, is the production value. Is it that it might be a little bit too on, on the smaller side? I mean, if you uh, both in terms of marketing and getting visibility on the different platforms and that kind of stuff. So I think your question is very valid. How much do you want, or actually, how much do you need? And to to expand on that question, how much do you need? At max, to like you, you know, bring up the production value, perhaps two, three, four, five times. I mm -hmm. think then it's a, uh, it's more viable way to compete with this game. Yeah, you know, you you offer the the audience a lot more stuff to play, and so on. So that would be my my feedback. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good. That's the way to respond to feedback. <laughs> Do not argue, <laughs> say thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff on. Uh, yeah, as he was saying, uh, it's, uh, it's a really interesting concept. I think uh, 
if you the current scope could be too small to have a chance to actually beat out uh, uh, yeah make it in the market mm. uh, but if you if you get fund enough funding and uh, uh, kind of have the longer plans i think this could be a really cool hit uh, and uh, but I, i'm also interested in understanding more about how deep this game is system wise you mentioned uh, there is uh, progression and replayability but uh, how deep that replayability is a question mark which i would uh, gladly understand more later yeah thank you All right. good yeah man. Um, I would also echo what uh, Stefan and Joel is saying. What is the ambition here? If you're going to bring on external investors, um, they might have some sort of a uh, vision in the long run. And are you um, going to work towards the same vision? So create alignment there. And that's just a question to have internally. Mm. I think um, the second part is also regarding replayability. If, if you're going to update with new content um, and you're a two-man team right now and you might be you might have a hard time to bring on more uh, developers or people that work with art. Um, how will that in fact affect your your ability to bring out new content to your your players and your community? Mm. Yeah. And, uh, um, yes, I'm r we're really gonna think about that feedback. Uh, it's good feedback, and see how we can uh, expand the scope in a good way. And uh, if we expand the scope, see if and how we can take in uh, uh, other people to he help us make the game a better game. So in, the, in the right way. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. uh, there are examples, like Salt and Sanctuary, mm. uh, similar setup, a, a married couple that just, yeah, we want to create our own game. And it's successful, and they didn't, they, uh, didn't need a publisher or additional external a funder to reach that potential. So if you want to stick with that, that could be a good approach for you as well. Mm. But if you want to bring external uh, influencers or participants, I think most of us would want to know, yeah, how can we expand this? Because mm. it's a cool concept. So either expand it or keep it in your family. <laughs> <laughs> and and maybe hire more dogs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah the dogs are very productive. Uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm told. Uh, Lina Andersson, go fight fantastic. Yeah, Big hand. So Thanks for coming <laughs> on this stage. It, it, it's funny with this uh, couples making games. We had a winner last year at Investing Games at Nasdaq. Yeah, Kill Monday uh, Games. Kill mm. Monday Games, yeah. yes. That's also a, a couple. It's, it's a game of love, in a way. Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> but in Hedemora. Right. Well, passion is possible in Hedemora <laughs> and other places. All right. Next up is uh, Lisa Gaul from Nine Live Game Studio. Welcome on stage. Hello. <laughs> Big hand. All right. Yes. Take uh, it away, Nine Lives. Thank you. Uh, so my name is Lisa. And the f first thing I'm going to show you is a quick trailer. That was Baden Folk, uh, the current name of the game. And it is basically a creepy co-op escape room experience infused with a lot of Swedish folklore. Um, and the gameplay is random generated. So the house will be different. There are going to be different puzzles each time. You're going to meet friendly and hostile NPCs, which you may interact with if you want to. And each gameplay you kind of solve a little piece of the whole big picture um, and it's action point oriented which i'm gonna come to uh, real soon and also you see this picture it's part of our 3d 
a prototype. So we have a small prototype which we made in August. Uh, here you can see four of the characters. And we call it, well, <laughs> real-time turn-based, which may be a little bit confusing, uh, but I'm going to explain. So the real-time is kind of, you have uh, action points, which you can spend however you want to. You can solve puzzles, you can um, interact with your surroundings, or you can manage your items, or you can just further explore. And you can do that at the same time. So if you're playing with multiple people, you can all spend your action points at the same time. And the turn base is the house face. So the house actually um, lashes back at you. So uh, in, the early t in the early turns, it's going to be quite mild, just like a little bit spooky. And it's going to get worse. And in the late game, it will try to kill you. So it's going to slowly progress. Uh, so the summary is kind of you're, you're in the house and you try to unravel the mystery of your father's disappearance and you have to find a way to escape, solve puzzles um, to get out of the house. So we have like, a small roadmap. Right now we're at Sweden Game Arena. So <laughs> um, and we just finished our website and we're thinking about actually starting to sell some merch soon just to like get our name out there and show people that, hey, we exist, we're here. Um, and then we're yeah, going to do some more prototype and testing and think about investors and Kickstarters later on. This is our team. So um, we have, we're very happy to have the great journey, uh, which we have Patrick here today. Um, he's there helped us a lot, so they're kind of the community. Without them, we wouldn't be there. Uh, and our team consists, as you may see, of um, quite mixed. So we're four girls, four guys, just to have a balance. We want to have, um, want to kind of encourage women to be more interactive in the game industry. And we also have. A little bit of a plan. We have um, planned on doing a Kickstarter, get some sponsoring, um, and we also have kind of a base price, which we think may be good for a game, which is around forty nine to nine to nine ninety nine. Um, and we're gonna develop a service business model with new updates over time. And we're also thinking about releasing and selling some new features. So which you can buy on later on. This is some feedback we got <laughs> from our social media. We're quite, quite active, or trying to be. And we also won the Great Summer Pitch, um, an event that the Great Journey had, where you had to pitch your game. And that's for us. Thank you for listening. Hey. All right. Your turn, panelists. Uh, what uh, Nordic folklore are you taking inspiration from? What well, is that house, for example? Yeah, um, that house is actually in Kristinehamn, mm -hmm. which is in Värmland. So we're based in uh, Värmland, in Karlstad. So we're mainly taking inspiration from around Värmland. But we also may incorporate some some more as well, but this is like the main focus for us. We'll have that. Um, oh, it, it's a st rock in Värmland where a lady died with her child. Do you remember? Do you know that? <laughs> no, I, okay. I'm actually not from Värmland. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But half the most of our team are. Yeah. So I just kind of moved there to start studying, okay. and I kind of got stuck. Hmm. So. Yeah. You can ask, ask them about the rock. <laughs> yeah, what, what yeah, is about should. the rock? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're keen. All right. Arvin? Is this PC focused? Sorry? PC? PC yeah, only. exactly. Yeah. So okay. we're um, developing a Unity and we're thinking about releasing it on Steam firsthand. But we also want to broaden our horizons and mm. go to console. And this console is as well. strictly single player? No, it's actually co op. Co -op. So it's multiplayer. Okay. Yeah.
but you can also, we want to try to incorporate that you can play it alone as well, mm. as a single player. And, and what is sort of your plans to keep your community engaged? Is it releasing new content, sort of new chapters, or extending the story? Right, we thought about that, and we thought about both like, you have, a, as we have characters, that you get to make them your own, like you can style them, but also new puzzles, like new side stories you can explore. So with maybe new mythology, and uh, also some new, you can find poems from uh, Värmland's um, poets. <laughs> Fröding, <laughs> yeah. maybe. Sorry? Fröding, maybe. Yeah, for example. Yeah. So we want to try to incorporate culture as well from Värmland, just to like put Värmland a little bit on the map, <laughs> because there is so much there. So, yeah. Thanks. All right. You won? Yes. Your main uh, office is right there in Kronstad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you so. feel a connection now? I feel a connection. I know the lady yeah. and I know the other people <laughs> <laughs> in Kronstad. But, but uh, how do you interact in the game? Is it point and click or...? Uh, we're thinking about doing it mainly console. You can also play with uh, keyboard yeah. um, walking around, but we think about mainly console just because it feels so much nicer to walk around with a joystick All than right. with... Yeah. Uh, so that's what we're thinking about. Yeah. And how do you interact with the puzzles and uh, that kind of stuff? So you walk around and you, for example, you look at a picture. Yeah. And there might be something hidden there. So you, for example, if you click, if you left click, yeah. you can select the picture right. and look at it. And then you can investigate the picture, kind of try to search for something. Mm. So that's kind of our vision. Uh, um, is it similar to Project PT? That was kind of a horror. I actually don't know what that oh. is. <laughs> okay. Um, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was um, kind of a semi interactive prototype for a game that uh, was released. Uh, that, yeah, if you see an item, you can interact with it oh, right. uh, quite. Uh, Passively, so you just you click it and then something happens. But uh, how how would you say? Let's say this. How would you be able to interact with this bottle here? We're trying to. It's it's kind of like a long vision, but we want to try to make it as interactable as possible, so that you can interact with most objects. Um, but some objects that may say, "Oh, it's a water bottle. What what should I do with that?" that it's mainly just text, but you can't really do something with it, but you still have the opportunity to interact with it. So it feels like you have, like the, uh, yeah, like you can investigate everything. So it, just to get the feel of it. But actually our inspiration comes from Mansions of Madness, if you know what that is, it's a board game, and also Betrayal at House on the Hill. So those two board games are kind of our main inspiration point. Can I ask her a question? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, please. Oh, sure. Please. Thanks. This one. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, uh, is there is there a conflict or or is there um, a challenge in in combining all this smart content with the poems and the environment and the challenges, etc., with the random house map that's new every time, or have you do you have a great solution for that? It's a challenge, oh, really? I can say. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, it, it won't be easy. <laughs> um, but we're trying to work out a system for it. We've discussed multiple options, and we're still kind of figuring out which one to go with and how to tackle everything. But yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a challenge that reminds a little bit of a different board game, Cluedo. Oh, which yeah. seems right. to repeat yeah. or create new stories with uh, some yeah, simple patterns. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, you can thank me later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyone I'm else? I'm, I'm not sure if you mentioned that, but uh, what are you looking for from an external investor? Uh, we're thinking about, as we're quite a lot of, quite a few people, uh, we're thinking about six to eight million uh, crowns. Swedish crowns um, for two to three years, depends on. As many of us are studying right now, uh, we have to see like may, some may w work part-time and some may work full-time. 
So we still have to figure that one out. We're kind of waiting for the summer to come because some of them are just finishing their thesis and it's super hard to, in the middle of that, try to start working full time with a game. So this would be, um, uh, if the Kickstarter campaign would be a super success, would it still be in your interest to have an external or will you, if you get enough, will you just keep it yourself? We're not sure. It depends on how well it yeah. will go. <laughs> Maybe if it will go really successful, then uh, I think we could do it alone as well. But we'd appreciate the, like, the help of a publisher because there are so many parts that we just don't know how to yeah. tackle because we're all new. Like none of us have been in the business. So for us, it's really hard to know how to tackle everything. So it would be that would be great to have someone to like just talk to and ask for advice and yeah. Yeah, and there are so many different ways to have a publishing deal. It could be yeah. this part or the entire package. So yeah. Exactly. Speaking of advice, this moves us into opinions and recommendations. Already? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Brilliant. Well, um, I'm and really fun. curious about the gameplay. Um, for instance, is there any kind of easy question though, but uh, change in pace and so on. Um, but I will try to uh, transform this into a tip. Yes, I please. Mean, it, it would be nice to, to see that kind of gameplay in the video. Um, I don't know if you saw the last panel, but this was really good. It's kind of talked yeah. about how to pitch and, and that kind of stuff. And to me, uh, this kind of game, there are a lot of, of games like this out there. We get pitched, probably you guys as well, very much in this category of games. And it's really, really interesting for us to see what stands out. And, and to me, the, the pacing I is super important. Um, to if you can, yeah show that in the in the prototype or in the presentation sorry what category haunted house games yes That's exactly yeah. you know the mystery kind of uh, what is called walking simulator is mm. uh, yeah bad mouthing the genre but uh, yeah y you kind of get me i guess all right but uh, but it, it would be nice to, to understand the features of the game basically right good and see them yep. thanks right. all right yeah tie, tying in a bit to what he said uh, it would be I think you would benefit from uh, with adding uh, basically the core gameplay loop into your presentation to so we get an understanding what you how you actually play the game because right. it's yeah we hear that you're supposed to solve a puzzle and you're in a horror house that and uh, you fight time but how you actually play the game is is still a bit uh, unclear for me, even after uh, you had a great presentation, but uh, <laughs> that part uh, missed my head. Right. All right. Thank you. And I think the last thing I would add, um, just maybe it's a bit early for you because you're looking to raise capital or uh, for the Kickstarter in a couple of months. Um, but what is, once again, sort of the long-term vision of this company? Are you continuing to build from this game and release new content? Or will you expand into other sort of genres or other titles or will there be sequels? Um, and highlight that in connection to the ask. Once again, you don't you didn't really have an ask today, um, perhaps as how much you're raising, um, but that is something you should include perhaps in the future if you're going to meet investors, I think. Yeah. All right, cool. Thanks, Sue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Lisa Gaul <laughs> and Nine Lives Game Studio. Big hand. I see a bright future for you. <laughs> Pleasure. Thanks for coming on stage. So escape rooms, that seems to be <laughs> catching on, yeah? yeah. And co-op. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Co-op, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Mm -hmm. we, we have some people w who used to be in our member companies that are now in the escape room business. Yeah. Yeah. So there's definitely a... I don't know what to make of that, but it says something. But board games are, have been on the rise as well, so getting influences oh, from there good is... good point. Is so there's good three, place to three boxes ticked. Okay, thank you, Anton. Next up, Avocado Studios, Matthias Jenwald. Welcome on stage, big hand. Oh, sorry, Avocado? Yeah, <laughs> thank Avocado. you. Avocado. 
Right, hi everyone. I'm Matthias, and I run Avocado Studios. And it's my vision to create fun and engaging gameplay without featuring violence in the gameplay. I've been making games in Unity for the past five years, and I'm here today to show our latest project called Island Dwellers. So Island Dwellers has been in development for about a year and a half and is currently in a very early stage of development. It's a real-time strategy game where your goal is to lead a small group of people to survive on an island by collecting resources and building a base. It's inspired by other management survival games such as Banished. And uh, aside from surviving, the tribe can also expand by inviting new individuals to join the tribe and also interact and trade with other tribes on the island. And eventually, through diplomacy, merging with them and uniting the entire island. So let's watch the trailer. So in its current state, the game is a fairly generic strategy game. However, the future, the final version, will have a twist. A new dimension of gameplay as the sea level will be rising. So when you're building on your island, it will slowly submerge into the ocean, forcing you to take action and save your people by traveling to new islands, randomly generated islands in a progression system similar to that one seen in games like Bad North, for example. So this makes the game not uh, only a real-time strategy game, but also a roguelike game. So when you travel from island to island, your tribe will keep its technological progressions, but the settlements that you have built will be lost in the ocean behind you. Each island will provide the player with a unique experience, with new challenges and new opportunities until the final island is reached where the goal is to please the gods and make them stop the apocalypse and save the world. So as I mentioned before, the game is still in a very early stage of development, but I'm happy to talk to publishers about the future. And I will be live streaming the game in its current state today at 3 p.m. on the Avocado Studios Discord server. A link to that is available in the Digital Expo. Feel free to reach out and contact me anytime on avocadostudios at gmail.com. And thank you for listening. All right, thank you. <laughs> Big ups. Yeah, sure. Uh, can you tell me a bit more about the special challenges at each island? Uh, I'm thinking um, that each island could have maybe a different climate. So if you have a tactic that works on one island that you played, you grow a certain crop or something like that. But then the next island might have uh, a harsher climate. Maybe you have to change your strategy to make sure that it's not uh, repetitive gameplay five times over. Yeah. Uh, how long uh, development time do you think this is? Uh, remaining um, around a year or two, maybe. It depends on uh, if I can get funding and expand the team, or also depending on the scope if we want to change that. But and wh what's the team size now? It's only me right oh. now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so what is the ask for today? Is there an investment ask? Are you looking for funding? Is that it? Uh, no, I think it's a bit too early. I don't have an exact number. Uh, I'm mainly here to you know, get contacts. And mm. uh, But um, like depending on how quick we want to release it and, and the scope, the, the sum can vary. So, yep. so uh, uh, ideally, in six months from now, how would you see the team um, size be? I think ideally, we could, uh, I could have uh, at least hired um, 
one or two uh, people I know I can work with, and they have an early access released uh, fairly soon after that. And then the full release, uh, maybe six months or a year after that. Yeah. But right. it depends. Yeah. Do you oh. think the, the water thing will be enough to separate these games from, from other survival management games? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> um, will you run any kind of verification or test to, to make sure it is? Uh, yeah, that would be the point of uh, having the early access and I think uh, doing some iterations before that to see if it's, if it's enough or if we need to add something else to create, uh, you know, separate us from the from the rest of the games out there. Um, no, I think, um, just thinking aloud, so that is the thesis, sort of, that I think, from my point of view, it would be very, very clear if you could present that as well. Mm -hmm. This is maybe some more feedback, but yep. just presenting that the thesis we're going to test is we're going to um, go ahead and create a, a real-time strategy game, but the, sort of the core loop changes in uh, through the islands. Uh, that would be really nice to see up front. Mm -hmm. um, and and also I think what will be included in early access versus in the full release, what kind of feature sets uh, differs. Right. Thank you. And uh, just mechanically, what happens if can you lose and uh, if you don't uh, escape the island in time? Yeah, exactly. So if you don't have uh, if you haven't finished building your ships or however you want to escape. Uh, you will have to either restart on the same island or maybe uh, restart the whole uh, campaign, depending on the difficulty. And will you get something like a lot of roguelikes? Will you have uh, some starter bonuses depending on how successful you were in that run or how's the plan? Uh, that's not something I've considered, but it's definitely a good idea. Right. So. Well, uh, talking feedback, is it time for feedback? If you or like, yeah, yeah. if yeah, you like. Yeah, I would very much like... Uh, in general, you know, the train for early access to verify basic uh, features and gameplay, is that train is has left the station like two, three years ago. So I think you really have to think about what will make this game special or competitive towards other games in the genre already from the start, mm -hmm. uh, instead of taken that into early access because I think it will be a little bit difficult. You will be uh, quite lagged behind at that point. Okay. Yeah, thank you. We can, um, it's a good advice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any more good advice? No pressure. Bad advice yeah. is good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Try to top me. Yeah. Yeah. Try to expand <laughs> the team, I would say. Bring, yeah. bring someone yeah. on board. Make it faster and, and um, make sure that you understand sort of what differentiates your game from the rest. Yep. Yeah. It, it's uh, it, you have a cool idea, uh, but I think you need um, additional heads on this project. Uh, and uh, when you reach uh, reach a certain point, to uh, stop and just evaluate yourself, uh, do we have a chance in this market? Because there are a lot of heavy competitors out there, and uh, so you don't go all the way into early access. And then realize, oh, we have this. Uh, oh, people are. This market is saturated, and uh, you have spent a, a year in a waste, so to say. Even if it's probably a learning experience anyway. But yeah, you get my point. I think. Yeah. yeah. Did you say what technology you used to build this? Uh, Unity is the game engine. Yeah. Right, yeah. because I thought that was kind of beautiful, but b because the philosophy of the game is all about. Unity. Unity, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Great. Uh, uh, yeah. I love how that, that comes together. <laughs> per, sorry, I had a question that I forgot to ask. Uh, how uh, is there any conflict in the game except for the rising water with uh, the other tribes? Yeah, no, no conflict at the moment. No. Okay. And I don't plan to have any. Even emotional conflict, or no? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah. just maybe on a like diplomatic scale, but yeah. not yeah. not. Not actual wars. No. no. Well, the point is that we should overcome conflict and unite. Yeah, and uh, essentially, like maybe these people are, you know, sort of like related in the same, uh, and they have the common goal of surviving this uh, apocalypse. So. Right. 
Huh, that's almost like a metaphor for this time <laughs> that we live in, in real life. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> You're hitting hard <laughs> today, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, this is, my mind is just blowing. <laughs> wow, I don't know if I can take any more inspiration. So lucky for me, we're going to the break. Uh, Matthias Janvall, thanks so much for coming on this stage. Thank I you. see a bright future for you and uh, Avocado Studios. Big hand. Thank you.